Hi, Standard 8 candidates. I welcome you all for our science lesson. Still, we are in animals. And uh, today, we are going to have a look and a discussion on adaptations of animals to movement. Number one, adaptation of animals to flying. Pupils, animals that fly include birds like eagle, sunbird, winged insects like the butterfly, bee, and bat. They are called flying mammals. Why? Because they fly most of their lifetime. Pupils, I want you to have a look on following flying animals. We have the birds, we have the housefly, we have the eagle, we have the wasp, we have the bee, we have the moth, we have the scissor fly. Next, pupils, we move to some features of flying animals. They include number one, they have wings. The wings are strong and uh, muscular. Feature number two, they have streamlined bodies to withstand air resistance and reduce friction when flying. Feature number three, birds have light and hollow bones. When we say hollow bones, inside the, bo the bones, they, are, uh, they have something like a hole. So when they say hollow, they contain nothing inside. This is to enable them to float in air. Feature of flying mammals, number four, is that vetters are attached to the wings in birds. Feature number five, feathers are arranged to form a waterproof surface. When we talk about the waterproof surface, even if the birds are rained on, water does not penetrate into their body. Feature number six, bats, those are that's a flying mammal, have broad wing membrane for flight. Winged insects have large wings. Birds have tail feathers, which act as brakes and also assist in turning. Pupils, some birds do not fly. They are known as flightless birds. Flightless birds are those birds which does not fly at all at all. Candidates, what this is because they have little bone marrow that makes them light. Such birds include ostrich, penguin, and the kiwi. These birds, they don't fly. Reason given that they have bone marrow. And any bird with bone marrow they can't be able to fly. Number two, adaptation of animals to swimming. Candidates, as you know, we have swimming animals. Some animals that swim are as follows. We have fish, frogs, ducks, whales, and the dolphins. The candidates, animals that swim are called swimming animals. They have the following features. Candidates, I want you to listen carefully to the features of swimming mammals. All swimming animals have 
streamlined bodies. A streamlined body allows for easy movement in water. Next feature, swimming animals like frogs and the swimming birds like the duck have webbed feet. Webbed it is W E W B E D. So they have webbed feet. When we talk about candidates webbed feet are uh, useful in propelling the animal in water. Another feature is that fish have fins on the different parts of their body playing different roles in swimming. Candidates, I want you to have a look on the external anatomy of a fish. Features of swimming animals that is now that fish. We have the mouth. We have eye. We have the lateral line. We have the dorsal fin. We have the caudal beduco, caudal fin, anal fin, pelvic fins, bacterial fins, gills, and lastly we have the obeclam. Candidates, we are going to see the function of each external anatomy. Number one, we have fins. Candidates, functions of birds of a fish, number one, fins. Fins, they help a fish in balancing. Fins help a fish in steering. Fins enables a fish in changing direction. If it was going to north, it can be able to change easily to south or east or west. Fins help in pitching. Pitching we mean that the simply means enables the fish to move upwards or downwards. Then lastly, fins helps the fish in breaking if it wants to come to a somewhere to stop. So it helps the animal in breaking. Number two, we have the dorsal fin and the ventral fin. Candidates the dorsal fin or ventral fin prevent the fish from rolling. Three, number three, tail fin or caudal fin. Tail fin, also known as caudal fin, propels the fish forward and assists in breaking and uh, turning. Candidates. Number four, we have the lateral line. The lateral line, it helps to detect pressure, disturbance in water, and uh, therefore identify a source of danger. Number five, swim bladder, also known as air bladder. Candidates. The function of the swim bladder or air bladder, it keeps the fish afloat. That is what we call buoyant. Even when it is not swimming, it is able to remain on the surface of water. Six, the scales. Candidates, the functions of the scale, they make the fish streamlined by overlapping backwards prevent absorption of water by the skin the scales also help to protect the fish against external injuries number last but not least it is it is the slimy fluid candidates what is a slimy fluid this is fluid protects the fish against entry of the germs through the skin. It also reduces friction. Candidates, we move to adaptation 
for movement by hopping and uh, leaping. Animals which move by hopping or limbing have very strong masculine hind legs. Candidates, this adaptation pushes the animal forward in the course of hopping. Candidates, the front legs are less muscular to help in landing. Examples of animals that move by hopping or leaping are frogs, toads, kangaroos, grasshoppers, crickets, and uh, locusts. Candidates, we have other adaptations. The other adaptations are as follows. One, hibernation. Two, comorphologing. Three, coloration. Four, feeding in chameleons. Candidates, I want to explain each of the following adaptations. Hibernation. Candidates, hibernation, this is the ability of animals to remain dormant during times of unfavorable weather conditions. Candidates, when animals are in hibernation, they remain inactive. Such animals may hide or burrow under the rocks or in the soil. Example of animals that hibernate are bears, squirrels, polar bears, frogs, snakes, koala bears, lungfish, frogs, butterflies, and the toads. Adaptation number two, camouflaging. When we talk about camouflaging, is the ability of an animal to change its skin color to match with that of the environment. Why does it change its color? So that it becomes for the enemy to attack the animal. Candidates, an example is a chameleon which camouflages to hide from predators. Candidates, when we talk about predators, we are bearing in mind enemies. When they change color, they are not easily seen. Our adaptation number two, number three, it is coloration. Other animals have a skin color that blends well with that of its environment. Such animals use adaptations called coloration. Example of the animals that do the coloration are as follows. Lion, zebra, giraffe, leopard, cheetah, crocodile, some snakes, fish, hyena, stick insects, and praying mantis. Candidates, we move to the last feeding in chameleons. Candidates, when we talk about feeding in chameleons, chameleons use their sticky tongues to catch insects. They also have sharp eyesight for spotting foods. Candidates, let us have a look on signs of ill health in animals. When we say an animal is not feeling well, what are some of the signs are you likely to see or observe? Number one, we have stunted 
or retarded growth. The animal does not grow day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out. The animal, it is not growing. It is the same size it was last year. That is what we call stunted or retarded growth. Sign number two, it is loss of weight. If the animal was weighing 150 kilos, it starts, it starts to reduce to 130, 80. That's when we say loss of weight. Then we have reduced yields. If it is a dead animal which is being milked 20 liters per day, it cuts to 15. The first day, the second day to 10. That's when we say reduced yields. Rough coats. The outer look of the skin. The, if it is the animal, the fur are elect. That is a sign of rough coat. That is a sign of ill, healthy in animal. Another one is coving. The animal coughs. Bread in stool. If you check the cow dung, it is accompanied with bread. Loss of appetite. The animal does not eat properly. Discharge from the mouth. If it is saliva, the animal discharges saliva from the mouth or other liquid discharge. Another sign, discharge from the nose, that is running nose. It discharges liquids which is more of mucus than water. Another sign is dry muscle nose and the mouth they are dry always in isolation and dull the animal isolates itself from the other heads studies when you are able to say this is a, a sign of sickness another sign is always the temperature change of temperature that is, it might be too high or too low. Lastly, but not the least, candidates, we move to effects of livestock diseases. Effects of livestock diseases are as follows. Low yield, death of animal, low quality of production, transmitting diseases, to human beings, high production costs, low income. Candidates, I am stating the effects of livestock diseases. I explain by the end of low income, I am done with today's lesson. Effects of livestock diseases. The effects of livestock diseases include low yield. Low, low yield is the same as low produce. Low yield diseases leads to reduced produce by animals. Even the animal, they usually being milked 15 liters, it reduces to 12 or 10. Two, death of animals. Deceased animals may die. Unlike human beings, when you are sick, if you are not treated, if the disease is not discovered earlier, the likelihood or chances of survival, they are almost nil. So, death of animals, deceased animals may die. Three, low quality of production. Products of deceased livestock are of lower quality. Example, we have bread stained milk of a cow and the perforated hides and the skins next number four is transmitting diseases to human beings candidates transmitting diseases to human beings human beings may suffer from diseases by feeding 
on products of deceased livestock. For instance, there are some people who are uh, fond of eating meat. You have animals in at your home, an animal dies because you you are favorite like the dish is meat, you say no. Uh, let us have some meat from this animal. If you eat that meat, the chances is that you are going to be infected with the diseases. Number five, it is high production costs. Candidates, high production costs due to what? Due to administration of drugs to cure the disease. If the animals, they are very sick, you go and look for a veterinary officer. A veterinary officer is not going to offer free of charge services. No, he's going to charge for the services rendered for the curing of the animal. By so doing, you are the farmer in cars, high costs of production. Lastly, it is low income. Candidates, when we talk about low income, to the farmer due to low yields and high cost of production. For instance, a farmer has bought feeds worth 80,000. So those feeds worth 80,000, the animal is going to be fed for the whole month, whereby the farmer is expecting to have good yield. But all of a sudden, the animal reduces the milk from 10 liters to 6 liters. So by the end of one month, the farmer is going to have low income, which equates to loss. Candidates, that was that is where we have come to the end of our today's lesson. And today's lesson is the, brings us to the end of the topic animals. Inshallah, next time we are going to meet for our science lesson, we are going to do a different work. Candidates, I urge you to listen carefully. You take summary notes so that you revisit the notes. If you do so, the message will be stored in the subconscious part of the brain for further transmission to examination papers. I wish you happy Eid. Inshallah next time. Thank you. Thank you for listening.